Uh, if you think on down the logical uh, life cycle of an asset, one of the things that I'm going to want to do, of course, is think about uh, setting up preventative schedules of things that I want to have automatically happen to my asset. So if we just go out and uh, uh, search for one that we've already got out here, uh, I think I set one up uh, just this morning on based on a uh, week uh, thing there. We do a search. Here it comes back that I've just set up an automatic reminder to go out that we want to bounce uh, our exchange server on Sunday nights, or it could be we would set up a recurring work order to make sure that uh, some clients' machines perhaps were had an image created on a periodic basis. Again, whatever the automatic reminder that schedule might be, you've got the ability to uh, predefine those and have those go out uh, automatically there. And then if you follow on down through it, of course, how do your assets eventually get, uh, get into your system there? So you're able to actually come in and actually do your, uh, your requisitions right from, uh, uh, right from the, the screen here. So I'll just do a wild card here and just bring up one of these to give you an idea of the type of information that, uh, that we grab here. So here is a particular purchase request. You know, when is it going to be required? You know, what's the justification for it? Uh, if you're in multi-tenancy mode, which company is it in? Who is it for? Who is that manager on the assumption that there's probably an approval process that has to get kicked off here? If I wanted to indicate that an install uh, was needed, then I could go down. If you have the fully integrated suite here, I could go in and pull the appropriate change template for this type of uh, install if that were something that you, uh, you had predefined. Uh, then obviously down here are the uh, parts number of what's actually getting ordered here. Obviously, as much detail and who the approvals are going to be on that particular purchase request would be there. If you are selecting from predefined configurations, for example, I'm ordering a standard engineering laptop, and we always have those configured by Dell in the same manner, I could just pick that, and it would then have all of the specifications of you know video cards and memory and RAM and disk size and all of that. Uh, predefined, and I could just automatically, you know, add that to the uh, to the purchase requisition from that uh, from that standpoint. And it, as I said, it certainly goes through whatever approval uh, processes that you have set up as you uh, as you go through that uh, through that process. There, uh, if we kind of work on down our tree, there, you know, one of the things, as with all of the Remedy uh, ITSM modules, of course, is it is built on the ITIL best practices. And if you want to kind of see how Remedy is configured out of the box, what the process flow is around doing configuration management, as many of you know, that is included right within the, uh, right within the product offering here. Kind of at the top level, what is the flow here? You can then double click on any one of the devices and take it down to where you're actually getting into the actual work instructions and role-based uh, roles, and have that uh, show up as well as part of the uh, as part of the uh, the process. There, uh, one of the other things, just real quickly, let me show you uh, on the KPIs here on our contracts. You know, contracts by status. I wanted to make sure I showed that one the different types of contracts that we may have out there, lease, maintenance, master contract, software licensing, support, warranty. Again, you have the ability to define your, uh, your own if you, need to, uh, if you need to kind of do that. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, again, fully integrated with your other modules. So as I'm looking, for example, at a given uh, server, as I mentioned, if I want to see uh, uh, what incidents have been related to this. Of course, here was an incident that was recorded where it turned out that Maybach was the server in, uh, that was affecting that or was related to that. Those types of things are, uh, are automatically uh, tied together for you. So again, kind of, kind of in summary, it is a full life cycle uh, management and tracking of your asset. We'll cover in one of our future seminars, how did we get the assets into uh, the Remedy CMDB, how did we establish those relationships between the, the, uh, the CIs themselves, and that will be part of a discovery series. But once they're in there, then 
this is the tool that you would use to track and manage your inventory, to actually manage the CIs, which is what we were doing when we were looking at uh, the NABAC server there, to manage your contracts, both your generic type of contracts as well as your software compliance and certificates uh, associated with your software contracts. Uh, you know, your different standard configurations that made it very easy when I was ordering the uh, laptop you just talked about. Uh, obviously within Remedy if I want to do chargebacks and all that capability is there uh, if I uh, want to do that. We talked about being able to do the bulk updates of uh, uh, moving large amounts of, uh, of data, be they CIs, be they people locations, whatever, very quickly. We talked about the schedules that can be automatically set up and uh, associated with a given asset. We talked about the purchasing module, of course, where we are making, putting in the requisition and going through the, uh, the various approvals. And then, of course, there are any number of reports that you would expect to getting out here about my assets, where they're located, who they're owned by, what kind of issues and repair costs. And, have we had with different assets? What, when are we having support contracts uh, coming up for renewals and so forth? They're all there, and of course, all of these things tree up into the analytics module if you want to uh, want to use that as well. So at this point, kind of a high-level overview of uh, again what you're doing. We'll kind of open up the uh, the platform for some questions and. Uh, see if we can do that and again anybody who wants any further detail on any of these uh, you know please feel free to uh, let us know and we'll uh, we'll do that so Dan do you want to open up the uh, the uh, questioning channel there yeah I've actually uh, have answered a question already um, there are uh, two or three other questions that have asked Roger so if you're ready uh, if sure. others have questions feel free to uh, to enter those in the question section and we'll try to get through them uh, today. Uh, since this is part one, we focused uh, on the, the Remedy Service Desk as essentially the, the single source of truth for your asset data. Some questions pertaining to perhaps some of the other parts that we're going to be going over, Roger, but uh, one of the questions has to do with uh, discovery solutions and integrating uh, discovery products like Landesk and Alteris and the BMC product into um, into Remedy. Is that uh, the question revolves around the, the difficulty in doing that and can you do that? Yeah, well the answer to that is yes. Uh, obviously BMC provides a number of their own discovery products and they've already been integrated as you would expect into the Remedy CMDB. But here at Rightstar we have worked to leverage this customer's existing investment. So we've done Alturis, we've done Land Desk, we've done uh, obviously uh, SCCM and the, the typical Microsoft discovery tools. So all of those are very easily integrated using with Remedy as most of you know there are a wide variety of ways to bring information in through either APIs or ODBC connections or even simpler using web services. So the answer to that is yes. It obviously depends on which tool you have uh, as to what the uh, uh, what the implementation time would be, but we'd be happy to discuss that uh, you know on an individual basis. Okay, great. So some other questions are coming in. Um, let's see. Uh, could you please provide a? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That question was already answered. Let me. Uh, has anything has anything displayed? In other words, what you've already presented so far um, uh, so far presented. Uh, did it entail any customization on our part? Or is, I guess the, the question is, what you showed today, is it primarily out of the box? This, this is out of the box. Now, obviously, those relationships were made possible by using a discovery tool to bring in those relationships. But what I have shown and the ability to uh, generate the visual of the relationships and all of that is 100% out of the box in Remedy. ITSM 7.6.3 is what uh, this particular version is. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, how do you how do you enter uh, an asset in Remedy? I think we talked a little bit about discovery just a moment ago, but uh, what are the common methods for entering an asset into uh, Remedy? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there, there are numerous ones. Obviously, if you've got them in some type of repository, your own database or, you know, Excel spreadsheet or whatever, it, Remedy comes with data import tools to allow us to just bring that information in. 
Obviously, discovery is is one of the more frequent methods uh, used to uh, used to do that. But I mean, you know, I can just also use the old type of that I want to go in and I want to you know create a uh, a new computer system or you know whatever it is and just manually put it in. Not perhaps the most uh, most efficient way to do it, but I can just hit my create button and uh, you know go down, bring the form up, and uh, start uh, you know filling in the information uh, as appropriate. But uh, most people, if they're new to Remedy or coming to the site, they've got it in some type of a repository. And again, using the data import tools, it's pretty easy to get that information in there. Okay, thanks, Roger. Um, there was another question: How many nodes and what type of architecture hardware required to support the nodes? Well, a typical Remedy install, and again, there, there are a lot of variables that go into that, that that we would need to know, but typically a Remedy environment is a three-server environment, uh, one for your application server, one for your mid-tier server, uh, obviously your web server there, and then, of course, one for your database server. Uh, there are various guidelines on how to configure processors and memory and all of that, depending on what your, uh, your particular volumes are and the number of licensed users that you're going to have. And, you know, we can certainly work with you uh, to do that. And then, of course, your discovery tool, if you've got one of those, they typically have their own server that is running in that environment as well. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Um, is the location configurable to show not just floor, room, but rack and slot location? Uh, that's not an out-of-the-box functionality that's built into, into uh into Remedy, as, as most of us all know, you could certainly do that. However, there are some partner tools that, uh, that BNC has relationships with, and, and we at WrightStar actually uh, work closely with these companies that actually provide that extra level of detail, and it's fully integrated to Remedy. But this tool called Inlight uh, Data Center Management actually then helps you track your data center floors, the racks on those floors, the servers in those racks, and includes also keeping track of the, uh, the number of free space you have in the racks, the number of heating and cooling requirements that are going on by rack, by data center floor, and that's typically how that additional granular later, uh, layer is, uh, is handled. And again, it is integrated uh, to leverage pulling the assets initially from Remedy and kind of having those uh, interfaced. Okay. And then there was a uh, question about uh, barcode uh, scanning. Uh, that's one of our uh, one of our parts that we're going to be providing later on. Um, and I could probably take that uh, question. There is an interface um, that we use by an organization or company uh, by the name of Aeroprise. Uh, the uh, the product is built to snap into Remedy and provide you the uh, the capability to uh, implement barcode scanning um, uh, throughout your organization. So, very nice tool. And that's a, um, that's a we, mobile enabled device too, I might add, that really allows you to uh, manage any of your tickets, incident change, asset tickets, uh, actually from a mobile device, your you know favorite Blackberry or iPhone, and then the, the scanning is just one of those, is a part of the asset piece of that. Right. And uh, we just received a, uh, one other uh, question that is um, quite timely. And um, they asked, can you provide a schedule for the four other webinars uh, in this series? And we'll certainly do that. Uh, we'll provide that to you. Uh, we're still firming up the schedule. Uh, but we'll, we'll send that out to, uh, to each individual. Um, there have been a couple other questions that uh, came in. So uh, Roger, do you still have time? Sure. Okay. Um, do I need to know CMD? Do I need to know the CMDB model to add a CI? Are there changes to the previous model of CMDB in 7.6.3? You probably have an hour or two conversation pertaining to that one question, <laughs> but uh, if you could briefly provide an overview, that'd be great. Uh, well, to 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 add a CI in there, I mean, we're assuming here that you're obviously already going to probably have configured your CMDB. You do have to give it a unique uh, uh, CI name, which is the name that's being used by the the configuration uh, management database there. Uh, 